let's do this no not a workout but today we are going to find an answer for the one of the most common myth in software engineers especially who's newly joined to the software engineering field and also people who mostly work on a javascript based framework that is javascript or node is a single threaded application or single threaded engine so therefore it is not good for handle the heavy loads is it really true is javascript or not just can handle heavy loads so most people get in this argument you know, most people who come up with this argument javascript bad because a single threaded they don't know up until java 8 the java also though you handle the multi threaded java only work as a single threaded application they don't know that because here's the biggest problem with this myth behind this myth and people who talk about this they have not clear understanding about what is a concurrency and what is a parallelism it's a two different thing it is not the same okay so today we are going to talk about why did not js is a uh, single threaded and but how it sing, uh, how it works and is it really slow is it being a single threaded okay so what is good or what is bad it is not is our problem because what we need to understand what it is and how it is work so as i always says there are certain things we feel like we know this but actually we don't know or at least we know wrong so that's why we feel in a different way so i understand it's a complicated topic but as usual i am trying to explain you simple as possible so you can understand it and also if you're not subscribed to this channel you need to subscribe it now because no matter who you are you have something in this channel okay so let's go right so first we need to understand what is a concurrency and what is a parallelism okay are it same or different and what is a different okay here's the thing so now this okay so let's let's go from the beginning most of the people think this is how software works right so you have a software user asks you to do something right and you let's say get the data from the database and you go to the database right and get the data and when the data come back and you give it back to the user right so until this data come da database find the data and get the data back you do nothing right so that means your thread is not using it's a zero person utilize okay so now people see okay how we can speed up this process we can speed up this process so your application being multi-threaded multi-threaded multi okay so that means so there's a one thread you get the request it go to the database right and then you get the second request it's go to the database you get the third request it's go to the database and so and so forth right so now database find the data and give the response you get the response you give the data and get the response you give the data and get the response right so these they say this is very fast compared to our previous approach because now here three different threads working okay so now this is the where they think node is failed because node can do this node is a single thread okay here's the problem right in the previous approach we realized okay there is no nothing this thread is doing until the database data come but if you take, take this one this let's say it is a t1 t2 and t3 right so this thread is waiting here until the data comes so during this waiting time they do nothing so they do nothing mean they don't use a processor that's fine but if when you spawn a thread it, it it allocate a memory for that thread right because thread has a separate stack of instructions and the metadata and so many things right so that memory is being held until this work is complete right uh, during this waiting time okay so now is this efficient of course not okay so let's go with a different example okay let's go with a different example to understand whether we can do this how we can solve this problem okay in a real world so let's say you you are in a restaurant right you have a three tables right but you only have one waiter right you only have one waiter so there is a kitchen okay there's a kitchen and what this waiter do is you go to the table one and take the order and go to the kitchen and until this order is prepared the waiter is waiting here hey i'm just browsing the phone and do something and it's waiting so now order is prepared it gives the table one and then go to the table two and take the order 
and like go to the kitchen and one while it prepared is wait in there and take the order back and give it the table two and go to the then go to the table three. is this efficient no it is not efficient why because this waiter doing nothing while he's waiting until the order is prepared how about this approach so you take the order of table one and give it to the uh, kitchen and one day one until that's uh, ready you come to the table two and take this order and also hand over that to the kitchen right so now is this order is not prepared yet and so it come back and take the order from the table three and give it to the kitchen so now you can see we didn't increase the waiters number of waiters still is a single waiter but but he don't wait here right so during this time he do something what he do he take the next order and handing over to the kitchen so when the order is ready you can deliver this and deliver this and deliver this as soon as when order is ready right so now you understand we didn't increase waiters or else our world we didn't increase the number of threads but we speed up the process but how we cut down the idle time so this is called concurrency right so this is called concurrency so concurrency mean is nothing but right is nothing but dealing with multiple things right dealing with multiple things on the same time right so it take it handling the uh, table one order table two order table three order right so that's a concurrency so for example let's say you come back from office work right so now you you start to cook right so while you're cooking you get another call right so you go there and you answer the call right so once you are like your kettle or something is beeping so you keep the call and come back here and you do the rest and then you go back to the call see so you you are not doing the same thing like you, you are doing the two things at the same time but what you do is you do two different thing but one at a time right when you're cooking you're not in the call when you're in the call you're not cooking right it's concurrency but how about this how about this so you do like for example there's other way to do it right so you cook here right and someone answer to the call right so now two people doing two things which are not related to each other okay because cooking and the answer in the call doesn't relevant to it related to each other so like for example is a parallel right it's, it's happening at the same time right so even if in the parallel process right if it's two parallel process if you give it any time any given time both processes are running both things are happening not the process then you get confused right both things are happening in any given time but in a concurrent model you cooking you answer the call you cooking you answer the call you cooking right so in other words you serve the table one take the order table one and then you take the order of table two and you serve to the table one and so on and so forth one at a time right i hope you have a clear idea what is the concurrency and what is the parallel okay before we go to the known problem we need to understand this okay i hope now you have an idea right so now now we have a model of right concurrency with event loop right concurrency with the event loop what is the event loop problem okay let's see something like this right so let's get the same same our previous example right so three tables now this table is different right so now you have a kitchen right so wait it took the order, table of the order, uh, order of the table one on the table of the order one order uh, on the table one and handing over to the kitchen right and now this waiter is serving this table now now this table is like two gentlemen is asking you okay what you want to drink okay are you drinking whiskey or like you want beer or something like that they discussing but but meantime this waiter is waiting here right so now is dealing with answering questions and like giving getting giving his ideas and kind of like you know getting order so meantime this meal is prepared right though meal is prepared this waiter is not dropping this work and jump here and take the meal back okay so that's we need to clearly understand so a lot of people think when you do the async programming or async away as soon as job is finished it's getting executed no it doesn't right so understand this so now this waiter is serving to this table 
right? And meantime, this water is prepared. But what this waiter would do is, is complete this work, take the order and give it here, and then take this order. They will take this meal and handing over to the this table, right? So in the Node.js, in our technical world, Node.js, we have something called event queue. Right? We have something called event queue and event loop, right? We discuss these things, right? Event queue and the event loop. How does this work is when you take something, right? So let's say you, you go to like, like call back in, right? So call back in is an async call. So now when the backend until the back that it dispatch a request, right? And then it does it like it like holding it and go to the next do the next thing. The thread will go to the next thing. So now when the response comes, right, it doesn't serve immediately, or the call it can be a callback or it can be a single, it doesn't matter. It will go to the event queue. Right? It will go to the event queue. So now this thread is whatever it's doing is doing its work and then it go back and uh, pull out this response and do what it's supposed to do, right? So that is, you should understand very clearly, it is not that your async call completed, just immediately come back and take the work. No, the thread is doing what it's doing and once it's finished only, it go and back and check the event queue, okay? That's so important. So now, now, okay? So let's say you have a node application, right? Node application, which has the database. And this is your application. Okay, so now your problem is this is a single thread. Okay, one thread. So now, just assume it doesn't have any other thing but uh, getting this work done. So now when your first request comes, right? So this will take your request and handing over to the database and come back and take your next request and handing over to the database and come back and take your next request. Now, is single threaded but it just had a three request right it didn't wait until this response come back but it served other requests as well now see this one okay now see this one so when the data is ready you will experience all these responses let's say let's say uh, to take the data it take one second right if all these requests hit the same time to this application technically this resp response is supposed to come after 3 seconds, right? If it is served in order, this is supposed to come in a 3 seconds. Why? Because 1 second, 1 second, and 1 second. But you don't experience this, right? So you almost get response within like 1.1 to 1.2 seconds. If it's a 1, one second delay at the database, how this happen? This happens because though not is a single threader, your database working in a thread different is a different process that is the where your process and a thread is different right so for operating system this is a p2 this is a p1 process one right so now you offload your work to the database right so now if the database dealing with the multiple threads so what the database would do is your all three requests process and then it is hand on, handing over back to you so that is why you see this response time Right? It's just being a single threaded, don't expect the third third one will come after three seconds. You you send you flood with a thousand requests, but you don't see much different. That's another thing. Right? So what are the problem with this type of model? Single thread model. Okay? Single thread model. What are the different? So if your machine has only one core, right? If your machine has only one core. Uh, then this is no different because single thread only use one core, single thread application only use one core. Let's say most of the machines do nowadays at least eight cores or at least quad core, right? So let's say you have four cores or eight cores or if it's uh, like a 32 cores, right? So since the application is a single threaded, it will only use one thread, one core, right? Doesn't matter you have a 32 cores, it only use one core. Okay, like but uh, servers like uh, Nginx and um, Apache too. So those servers, what those type of application, what they do is they use a hybrid model, right? So what a hybrid model mean? It run multiple. Let's say you have a thirty-two cores. It run multiple processors, like let's say node node processors. 
and you load balancing to the each process. Right? Now within the process, it happened concurrency with the event loop. See? See the difference? Right? So within the process, if you take one node process, within that you use the event loop and concurrent model, but within the machine, it uses multiple processes itself, right? Multiple node processors. If you have eight cores, eight processors. So now you can distribute the work among the multiple processors and these processes will take care of and uh, going with the event loop, right? So now I hope you have a clear understanding. Though it is Java, uh, Node.js is a single threaded, but Java is a multi threaded. No, it is, it is not how you interpret it, right? Even your Java, even the Java is a multi threaded application, even Java can handle the concurrency. If you, if it is a before Java 8, if it is, a, if it only use, no matter how many cores you have, it only use a one core, right? Particular core because it can do anything else it, because it's handle concurrency. It is not the parallelism, right? It's a different, right? So what is the, what's the concurrency mean? Concurrency means you're dealing with multiple things. The parallelism means you uh, doing multiple tasks, doing and dealing is a different, right? So parallelism means you're doing multiple things on the same time and parallelism means, is concurrent mean, missed it again. Okay, let's go back from the beginning. Concurrency means you're dealing with multiple things, you call and then you cook and you're dealing with multiple things, right? The parallelism means you're doing multiple things, right? It's a very different. So now we understand the problem with a single threaded application, right? Because if it is a multi-core, it only uses one core. But is it a multi-threaded application or as a parallel application is all good? No, here's the thing, right? So see this one. So now you get the request, you create, you spawn out the th four threads for our previous example, right? So now you have to allocate, let's say, uh, four MB for each. Right? So 4 MB, all together 16 MB for these threads, all threads. Right? Because we spawn out of 4 threads. But, you do the same thing with a 1 thread, but uh, including a concurrency. Right? So you go to the database and hold that and go to the database, go to the database, go to the database. And when the result is ready, you can collect it. So now, you still allocate 4 MB, but you get all the work done almost in the same time, near same time. This is not identical same time, but in the near same time, right? But there are things which required parallel work, right? For example, um, 3D rendering kind of thing. We can think of something, it's good to have a parallel work. But most of the things what we deal with, we really not require a parallelism. What we require is a really nicely handled concurrency. Hope I answer your question. And if you have a like follow-up questions for this one, just comment below or send me a message to my... Uh, ideally, the, the, good, the easiest way is to comment below or else uh, send me a message to my Facebook page. Then I'm trying to answer that question as well. Then, until I see you again, stay safe. Take care.